From the opinion pages of the Wall Street Journal, this is Potomac Watch. On the eve of the 2022 midterm election, Republicans are poised to retake a majority in the House. But how big will that majority be? The Senate remains a toss-up and will tell you how some of the key races are trending. Plus, Donald Trump takes his first shot at Ron DeSantis. And Joe Biden takes an inadvertent shot, at least it seemed inadvertent, at Joe Manchin. Welcome, I'm Paul Gigo, and here we are on Election Eve. As Democrats are nervous and Republicans are hopeful, but are Republicans maybe expecting too much? To help sort it out, I'm here with ace political analysts Kyle Peterson and Kim Strassel. Welcome to you both. So when looking at an election, especially a midterm, it's important to look at the fundamentals. And in these midterms, that means particular president's approval rating, 42.4% approval for Joe Biden in the real clear politics average. That's right down there with Donald Trump's in 2018 when Republicans lost 40 House seats. So mark that down as an advantage for the GOP. Second look at the generic ballot, which is the poll question that asks, which party would you like to control Congress, Democrats or Republicans? And that in the RCP average is 2.5 percent advantage for Republicans. And that's consistent with what we've seen in recent polls, with one big exception, the NBC poll which has Democrats up by one. Then you have the issue mix. Voters say inflation, the economy, crime, and immigration are leading issues that will determine their vote, especially inflation and the economy. And those are all Republican strengths, including with independent voters. Abortion and democracy, the two big Democratic issues, are much less important. So with that backdrop, Kim, looks to me like Republicans are set to have a good night. The question, of course, is how good. Any doubt in your mind now that Republicans will take the House? No doubt in my mind. And Paul, just it's very difficult to buck those historic trends that you just laid out. And yes, there's a few anomalies of polls that suggest maybe things are closer than they are. But the broad bulk of polls have all been moving in one direction. The other thing that's really striking to me just today, the day before we go in to start the voting, is how many Democrats I'm now seeing in the press that are saying that they felt that they made an error in how they addressed those issues. There was quite striking USA Today story that had Democrat after Democrat saying, oh man, we really should have talked about the economy more, maybe not put so much into abortion. A striking number, by the way, Ad Impact looked at all of the advertising and found that Democrats have spent $424 million on ads focused on abortion. That is compared to $53 million on the economy or so they've spent eight times as much on abortion. Wow. Wow. Yeah, wow. Eight times as much. And now you're suddenly like the day before election, suddenly having a whole bunch of people second guessing that strategy and saying, I don't think this was the right approach. And that suggests to me that their own internal campaign polls are showing some problems for them. So the current spread in the House is 222 seats for Democrats, 213 if everybody is seated for Republicans. So gaining five seats as all the Republicans need to get a majority of 218. But 247 is the recent high watermark for Republicans in the House. That was after 2014. They need to gain 34 seats with that. Kim, do you have an estimate on what you think the Republicans are going to pick up? Can they get to that 247? If they have a really good night, they'll get more than 30. I was actually talking to a, a former Republican congressman yesterday who said something funny. He said, I was talking to the majority leader. My advice is if you only get seven, resign. Life is too short because it would be so <laughs> difficult. To govern. Yeah, exactly. To govern. But 20 is the middle ranking right now. If they have a really good night, more than 30. I think it's possible, but I'd wager more in the 20 area. Still, that would get them over. Uh, if they pick up 20, that would get them to 233. Well, that was more than Newt Gingrich had when he won the House. Of course, the reason is because the Republicans gained, uh, what, 13 or 14 seats in 2020, despite losing the White House. So they start this midterm at a higher mark. Kyle, how do you look at the House seats? Are you in with Kim's number? Yeah, I think that's right. I mean, the known unknown is that all of the pollsters seem to be worried about how they're going to fare and how their suggestions of where the polls are are going to compare with the actual vote outcome. And so we don't know what that error is going to be, in which direction it might be, how big it's going to be. 
And so it's hard to, to make any precise judgments, but I think that's about right. And the thing to keep in mind is just that, as you said, Republicans picked up some seats in 2020 despite losing the presidential contest. And so people are comparing this to previous wave elections, the Tea Party wave, but Republicans are starting from a higher base right now. And Nancy Pelosi's majority is one of the smallest historically in a very long time. And so even if they end up with only something like 25 seats, that will still be a pretty good election and will give Kevin McCarthy, presumably the next speaker, a little bit of wiggle room to govern as he tries to, you know, get the debt ceiling raised and things like that. Of course, the bigger the margin in the House, the more durable that could be in 2024. And that's very significant for whether or not they could retain control of the House, no matter how the presidential race goes in 2024, and could prevent a repetition of the last two years where Democrats controlled everything. Let's turn to the Senate where things are a lot closer. We have a half a dozen least toss-up races and several that lean one way or another also are close enough that, you know, could get some upsets. Kyle, how do you look at it? Are you seeing 51-50? Are there any particular races which you think are going to determine the majority here as we look for Tuesday night? I think that Republicans have reason to be hopeful of a little bit more than 51. But again, it will depend on whether the polls that we're seeing end up being true or not. I mean, if you look at the real clear politics average, Mehmet Oz in Pennsylvania is now up over John Fetterman by 0.1 point. So the smallest possible <laughs> spread that he can have as we go into election day. The other thing that I think would point to is it seems like there's been a Republican movement in the past week or maybe two weeks as voters have gotten more focused on inflation as an issue. But we're now in a situation where there are tens of millions of people who cast early votes, who cast mail votes before Election Day. And so that will be another fascinating thing to watch. But that's where I would point to New Hampshire as a potential Republican upset because New Hampshire does not have early voting. And in order to mail vote in New Hampshire, you have to have an excuse. So Don Bolduck there is the Republican candidate, and he's behind Maggie Hassan, Senator Maggie Hassan, by about a point in the real clear politics average. But this is a state where most of the voting still happens on election day. So he may be able to take advantage of this Republican swing more than some of his potential future Republican colleagues are able to. Yeah, those are two key races. Pennsylvania, I don't know how that's going to go. I think it's impossible to predict. My own view is that if Republicans had nominated David McCormick, who was running against Oz, lost narrowly to Oz, he would be running more comfortably ahead at this stage. Oz had that profile of not really being from Pennsylvania, living in New Jersey. Fetterman's made a big deal of his mansion in New Jersey. He's also not exactly from central mega casting, if you will, <laughs> hangs out with some of the guys that mega likes to mock, including Oprah, who endorsed Fetterman, by the way, his former television partner. So I don't know where Pennsylvania goes. I'm not so sure about New Hampshire. I think New Hampshire has been a tough state for Republicans, and I'm not so sure that's going to go that way, given the fact that Don Bolduc is not the strongest candidate. He's a rookie, a former general. He's coming on strong, and Maggie Hassan also is not that strong. But that's been a tough state for Republicans in recent years. And I'm also wondering about Nevada. Adam Laxalt is running there, son of a famed Nevada political family against Cortez Masto, the uh, Democratic incumbent. But that's also been a state where, contrary to what often has happened in polling, the polls there have overestimated Republican votes in recent years, and that could uh, bode ill for Laxalt. Yeah, so here's what I'm hearing from Republicans I spoke to over the weekend. They're feeling very confident about three of the seats that Republicans need to hold. That's Wisconsin, where Ron Johnson is, Ohio, where Vance is running, and North Carolina, where Ted Budd is running. Those are states that they absolutely have to keep. They're also feeling pretty good about Georgia and Nevada, which would be pickups for them. So that's a little contrary. I actually do understand your concerns there, Paul, because I agree. Uh, Nevada is just an odd state to poll as well, too. It really has favored Democrats in recent years, but they're still feeling good because they feel that there are some polls coming through that now show him with five or six points advantage, and they feel that makes them more comfortable. 
And by the way, if they were to get all of those, that would then give Republicans a majority. The question then are New Hampshire, as you said, Pennsylvania, also Arizona, where Blake Masters is trying to knock off sitting Democrat Mark Kelly. A lot of money has been spent there. He, like Oz, is not the most lovable character. and He's had a lot of trouble, Blake Masters has, resonating with the Arizona voters. That race is showing him very tight, certainly within the margin of error. There's been an enormous amount of money spent there more recently by Republicans to get him to that place. If Republicans were to get even another one of any of those three seats, that would very comfortably give them the majority. But those are the three that people are most concerned about that I'm hearing from.